Good morning. This mass is offered for holy innocents and families. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, today is the 23rd Sunday in ordinary time. The readings clearly tells us that God restores our joy and He gives us hope. But we have to be open. So in this Mass, let us open up ourselves, our hearts, for the times we fail to fulfill the law of the Lord, love, love. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to all my people and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me. May Almighty God of mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Say to those whose hearts are frightened, be strong, fear not, here is your God. He comes with vindication, with divine recompense. He comes to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, the ears of the deaf be cleared. Then will the lame leap like a stag, then the tongue of the dumb will sing. Streams will burst forth in the dread of heaven, and rivers in a step. The burning sands will become pools, and the thirsty ground springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of James. My brothers, your faith in our Lord Christ Jesus Christ glorified must not allow of favoritism. Suppose there should come into your assembly a man fashionably dressed with gold rings on his fingers and at the same time, a poor man dressed in shabby clothes. Suppose further you were to take notice of the well-dressed man and say, sit here, please. Whereas you were to say to the poor man, you stand uh, or sit over there at my footstool. Have you not in any case like this discriminated in your hearts? Have you not set yourselves up as judges who hand down corrupt decisions? Listen, dear brothers, did not God choose those who are poor in the eyes of the world? 
to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom he promised to those who love him. This is the word of the Lord. Again, Jesus left the district of Tyre and went by way of Sidon to the Sea of Galilee into the district of the Decapolis. And people brought to him a deaf man who had a speech impediment and begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him off by himself away from the crowd. He put his finger into the man's ears and, spitting, touched his tongue. Then he looked up to heaven and groaned and said to him, A father, who that is, be opened. And immediately the man's ears were opened, his speech impediment was removed, and he spoke plainly. He ordered them not to tell anyone, but the more he ordered them not to, the more they proclaimed it. They were exceedingly astonished, and they said, He has done all things well. He makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, Today, the 23rd Sunday of Ordinary Time, we celebrate our Savior, we celebrate Christ our Savior, who makes no distinction between people's classes. He lifts us and makes us all rich in faith. And we praise the Lord who heals and restores the afflicted. Today, our first reading is a message of hope, especially for the oppressed people of God and for all of us who need His saving help. So at the time of the prophecy of Isaiah in the first reading, worship of false gods and evil practices by kings and the people were rampant. Many of the worshippers of the true God were becoming faint-hearted and began to wonder whether God had abandoned and forgotten them. Because, the, you know, that God, the people that God had made their abandoned, not forgotten them, that was the messianic uh, a prophecy of prophet Isaiah. So Isaiah prophesied to the people, those who were thinking that God had abandoned them, and thus says the Lord, say, say to those whose hearts are frightened, be strong, fear not, he is your God, he comes to save you. So dear brothers and sisters, and he also further says, they, they, then will the eyes of the blind be opened, the ear of the deaf be cleared, then will the lame leap like a stag, then the tongue of the mute will sing. 
So Prophet Isaiah makes a call up to joy and hope because God intervenes and manifests himself in the midst of his people. Today, there are also many people who live in anguish, who live in anguish due to personal, family, and economic problems. There are also events that make us suffer, like illness, lack of work, accidents, and so many things before, you know, everything that makes us so sad and makes us to think that God had abandoned us and sometimes we feel gloomy and worried so much. So before this situation, it is not easy to find comfort and much less solutions. So however, the first reading tells us not to be frightened, to be encouraged, to be certain of God's saving and loving presence in our lives, and to be convinced that God will not leave us abandoned in the hands of evil or death. Let us not forget that God is there, that God, that He does justice and liberates in His time the oppressed. So, dear brothers and sisters, today sir, we see the prophecy of Isaiah is being fulfilled in today's Gospel reading. We see Jesus went from one town to the other doing good. So, and people brought to him a deaf man who had a speech impediment and begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him off by himself away from the crowd. He put his finger into the man's ears, spitting, touched his tongue. Then he looked up to heaven and groaned and said to him, Ephatha, be open. And immediately man's ears were opened and speech impediment was removed and he spoke plainly. So, dear brothers and sisters, here Jesus could heal that deaf man with a word. He could heal you, can, you be cured. As because we know, uh, we may think that the deaf man could not hear, so Jesus could not say a word to him. So instead, he put, a, you know, he took uh, and spitting, touched his ear. Uh, he put his fingers into the man's eyes and touched it, spitting, touched his tongue, and uh, it effort uh, be opened. That's how he took him aside and did. But you know, in the other place where Lazarus was dead in Bethany, he died four days ago, and he came to Bethany to see the family and to see Lazarus to visit uh, Lazarus' tomb. There he was uh, at the tomb of Lazarus. And there he told the people there to open the tomb. But Martha told, you know, uh, Lord, it had been already four days he died, and he must be stinking. He must be stinking. But you know, still Jesus told, open the, open the tomb. And Jesus told, Lazarus, come out. See here, a dead person who could not hear, a dead person could not hear because, dear brothers and sisters, in India we have a tradition when we take a coffin and the body of the person, uh, we keep him in a coffin and four people will carry on their shoulders. This side one, this side one, and back side, and in middle also, six to four people will carry the body of the person. First we go to the, we take the body to the church and there they offer the mass and uh, from there we take the body. Uh, the coffin uh, with on carrying on our shoulders, the people carry on their shoulders. And the way, just uh, uh, like a half a mile away from the cemetery, they opened the coffin. They opened the coffin and people called him by name, hey, Jacob or Peter, can you hear me? Can you hear me? So, if at all, with the band and the uh, fireworks and all these things, sometimes the person may not die and he may get up. So here people used to call him, though he, died, he was dead for two days ago and everything was over and on the way to the cemetery, the people opened the coffin and called him by name. So dear brothers and sisters, here it's a completely, Jesus is working a miracle completely in a different way. He took him off from the crowd. 
and he really touched his fingers. But whereas the Lazarus was dead, and he told him, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus was coming, walking, walking from the tomb. So, dear brothers and sisters, he heard them, you know, he has done all things well. So that's what uh, the, we see the prophecy, the prophecy of Isaiah being fulfilled in the mission of Jesus. Jesus and, he, and his mission was the fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy. As we see in the gospel, the healing of the deaf man who had a speech impediment was, the, as, was as Isaiah prophesied. It is a message of restoration from the Lord. It is a message of hope from a loving father who cares for all his children. He says to us today, courage, courage. Do not be afraid. Look, your God is coming. So dear brothers and sisters, we need to take courage because uh, we know the situation now because of the Delta plus. The cases in our region, in our county is going up, spiking up. Sometimes it, it makes us you know, frightened. But you know, your God heals you. Your God heals you. So there, uh, in today's gospel, you know, that's what we see. The gospel did not tell us that he healed only the rich or the poor. Rather, his blessings touch and transform the poor, rich, sinner, righteous, beautiful, and ugly. He did not discriminate or show favoritism. Instead, he identified with all classes of people. Jesus never showed favoritism. Jesus never showed nepotism. Instead, his mother and his brothers came to see him. And there were a large crowd. And uh, some, one among the crowd told Jesus, your mother and your brothers came to see you. And what did Jesus say? What did, he, what did Jesus tell? Who are, my who are my mother and my brothers? Those who do the will of God. Those, those, those who listen and do the will of God are my, my mother, my father, my brothers and my sisters. So, dear brothers and sisters, that's what we are born in today's gospel reading, in the today's second reading. St. James writes, don't show favoritism or nepotism or anything. Because sometimes we treat the people the, the way they look. The way they look. And sometimes we treat the people uh, what, what they have, what they don't have. So, uh, Jesus never treated like uh, Jesus went to everyone. Christ visited and ate with the Zacchaeus, the tax collector. He called Levi, the tax collector, and transformed him into St. Matthew, uh, the great evangelist. He also healed the daughter of a Gentile, Jairus, the wealthy Roman centurion. And again, uh, Jewish tradition, he spoke with a Samaritan woman. Against Jewish tradition, he spoke with Samaritan woman and transformed her life by bringing her to faith. So he also healed many poor, blind, lame, deaf, and dumb people. Indeed, he did all things well without favoritism. So dear brothers and sisters, let us approach Jesus with faith that he may also take us away from the crowd and give us a similar personal attention. So let us present to Jesus our life, our family, our business, our plans, our worries, and so on, that he may touch us, heal us, and restore us. Amen.
God of love, help us to heed the voices of those in need. Gather us all together and hold us in your love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for and good and the good of all His holy church. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting, we may fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Lift him up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly really right and just our duty and our salvation and always we are to give him thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity, and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices we pray join with theirs in one chorus of acceptance praise as we are today. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from me. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Together, Francis, our Pope, and Robert, Marsha, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also, brothers and sisters, we have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all we have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy in his heart, we pray. Lord, with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, bless with Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, we are pleased to you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, um, coming Wednesday, uh, September 8th, is the birthday of our lady, Blessed Virgin Mary. So we have a rosary group in our parish. So they are going to conduct a rosary prayer service on a Tuesday, a day before, on 7th uh, September. So at 11.30, all will come gather in this church at 11.30 and 11.45 or 12, 12 p.m. Before that, we share our intercessions to our lady uh, and pray. And later, we begin a rosary to honor uh, our Blessed Virgin Mary and also to pray for the peace in the world. So you're all welcome. You're all welcome and uh, uh, join to pray the rosary uh, for the world and for the sick for the people in Christ. Let us pray. <clears throat> Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life, through the foot of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Wish you all happy Sunday and wonderful week ahead of you. Thank mm -hmm. you.